There's a fourth water deviant creature, a cockatrice. She's hoping to maybe find a bestiary describing one here in the temple vaults. Greetings of the even-handed to you. Welcome to the House of Tyr. I am Reverend Judge Olef Uska, in service of the maimed god. Reverend Judge Olaf Uskar. Or Lily introducing herself. This Tyran home welcomes your well mannered address. Ask what you will, I shall respond as I'm able. Yeah, ex asking exactly who he is. We ministered to the plague sufferers. Previously, we were working on artifact recovery, which may be even more important now. It's interesting. It's really a matter that would only concern someone more spiritually minded. I don't think you're the type. No offense meant. Well, Lily's interested in artifacts. <laughs> Perhaps I was too quick to judge. You seem sincere enough. You may be able to understand why this is so important. In the weeks before the plague, we uncovered the tomb of Ms. Laznia Fairblade. She traveled widely with Haluth Never, founder of Neverwinter. This was a great discovery, and gave clues to the whereabouts of the founder's resting place. That would have been a great discovery indeed. Yeah, undoubtedly, the play complicated things. Yes, it did. It's very unfortunate, because pursuing these tombs becomes all the more important when the city in crisis as it is. People are scared, and the lack of progress on a cure has diminished their hopes. A find like this would buoy their spirits. There's also a chance that powerful artifacts could be found alongside Helith Never's remains. But not rest my hopes upon it. <laughs> I think Lily's certainly curious, though. Yeah. Ask him more about Haluth Never, the founder of Neverwinter. Actually, not much is known about him. He's become a bit of a legendary figure. He reportedly fortified a fledgling Neverwinter against the Illisk Barbarians, deflecting their wrath to Luskin and setting the tone for our uneasy relations with that city. Knowing the details of his life could be very beneficial to the city. The people need to know they have a history of defeating adversity. Well, of course Lily has an interest tomb of Haluth Never or an elite order associated with him, of course, uh, might provide very valuable indeed. I welcome your aid in this matter. You couldn't have arrived at a more fortuitous time. Here, take this letter with my seal. It signifies that you act with my sanction. Take it to Briley in the Peninsula District, which is the prison district <laughs> that Arabeth wanted her to go to. And he will aid you. He guards the one tomb already found. Oh, so it's probably already been plundered. But I guess as a start. It's in the basement of a house in the east side of the Peninsula District. Return to me if you find anything. I'll reward you. Lily is certainly interested in artifact recovery, especially valuable ones. She only wonders how much she can really separate from the reported hoard before jeopardizing the receipt of her next assignment. Of course, if they find Never's tomb, there would be no next assignment, and it could all be hers. It would be a crime of the ages. Greetings to you again. It is good to see you return to this house of Tyr. Yeah, otherwise, Judge Olaf offers no other services. Or reminding Lily what she has to do. Otherwise, on to look for that bestiary. A cockatrice. Lily's own cockatrice feather quills before for scribing scrolls, but otherwise she's never encountered one before. She has no doubt Emma wouldn't even know how to spell the creature's name. Lily finds herself, though, getting distracted by thoughts of treasure hunting, or rather artifact recovery, as she'd prefer to call it. One text describes the River de Sarn that flows from the Lost Peaks. That's a range of mountains found directly north of the Star Mounts, into the Sea of Swords at Waterdeep. 
It's the river that gives River Gate its name. Not that I really wanted to be reminded of the dominated Emerald Dragon Sailor looking for it. Anyway, minstrels sometimes describe the Disaran as a sword thrusting up into the heart of the north. In fact, the river itself was once known as the Sword. The book remarks that this is important knowledge for those trying to puzzle out netherese and other ancient writings, trying to locate important sites or priceless treasure. Like Haluth Never's tomb? Perhaps. The Judge Reverend probably didn't even know these scraps of parchment were here to begin with. And then, a painful reminder of her predicament, a book on the religions of the Sword Coast. To quote, the deities of Faeron take an active interest in their world, channeling power through their clerics and other worshippers, and sometimes intervening directly in the affairs of mortals. Or, in Lily's case, in the affairs of other immortals. Most names she recognized. Corellan Lerthian, the leader of the elven Seldarine, from which she remembers meeting the Leaf Lord in Seldanesilar. Moradin. If Lily had a coin for every time a dwarf mentioned his hammer, she wouldn't be in this monetary mess to begin with. And Umberly. Lily distinctly remembers the Bitch Queen's temples in both Boulder's Gate and on the Pirate Isle of Brynlaw. Needless to say, not the most hospitable of places. Lily didn't need to be reminded of Mistra either. In fact, she often found herself dreaming up schemes against the Goddess of Magic while soaking in the bath at Duramore hoping to add magic to her then sparse portfolio of only murder. And neither did Lily want to be reminded of Cyric. That's about when she put the book down, along with a silent curse against the Prince of Lies. Enough of the gods, enough of lost treasure. Back to the task at hand. But there appears to be no bestiaries describing cockatrices to be found anywhere. Otherwise, in a corner on a wooden cabinet littered with a few stray gold coin, a test of character laid out for visitors by the Judge Reverend, no doubt, Lily leaves her copy of The Origin of Magic from the student library at the Neverwinter Academy, and decides she's had enough of Tyr in his temple, full of too many plague victims and panhandling vagrants, and not enough books or bestiaries. Lily may not be rushing to lock herself indoors, but she's certainly not going to stay here among these wretched plague victims. Wailing death indeed. Even if not contagious, who could sleep with this incessant moaning? She'll need to find decent lodging away from the bedridden and the beggarly. Welcome. Do you have news of the missing water Davian creatures? Or is there something else you need? And the Judge Reverend has likely paid for the first night. Praise Tyr and his inability to bear witness to what goes on in his very own temple. Lily vows to ignore the little beggar by the door. No matter how loud he plead for a coin or whatever it is vagrants get away with asking for these days. She'll not fall for any of the usual tricks either. And places her hand firmly over her coin purse while walking by. But he's claiming to be for hire? That's certainly a new one. She decides to find out what devilish little scheme the halfling thinks he's getting away with now. Voila, eh? You have the smell of a prospective employer about you. Not that it's easy to smell anything with all the burning corpses in this city, mind you. Never seen this many flies outside of a Callum shot alehouse. Alright, of course, this is Tommy Undergallows. She probably thought was a beggar. <laughs> Then he talked about being for hire. Or asking exactly who he is. Me? Why, I'm none other than the renowned rogue Tommy Undergallows. Grin to my friends, Tommy grin to the lasses, and that damned halfling to anyone in a position of respectable authority. <laughs> I can forgive you for not having heard of me, however. I hail mostly recently from Calimport, and that's a long way for even my reputation to travel. I give it another week, personally. Yeah, I guess she's assuming that he's running from his reputation. Nothing too wrong with having a bit of a reputation, milady. Keeps the flies from settling, if you know what I mean. If the heat gets too high, you just step out of the kitchen, right? You know how it goes, I'm sure. 
rob some overfat human caliph with piggy lips, kiss his daughter as a lark before you escape with the loot, and suddenly you're the most wanted man in Kalimshan. How was I supposed to know that he was so sensitive about his daughter? I still say it was worth it. That took flair, and I have flair. Too bad Neverwinter didn't treat me any better first. Neverwinter seemed to find enough city for an enterprising young halfling like myself, on the surface anyway. You'd be surprised at what people get away with here. They can take a perfectly innocent man, accuse him of simple pickpocketing, and throw him in prison without even so much as a trial, or even a very fair one anyway. That judge was mean. Fortunately, my stay in Neverwinter's fine prison system was a short one. I didn't arrange for my escape, oddly enough, but I was glad for it nonetheless. Alright, so that's probably the only thing that's really interested Lily, besides the fact that he's a specialist of sorts, is that he's actually been in the prison of the prison district itself. Not sure if that would be useful, but <laughs> asking how he escaped. The exact goings-ons within the prison are not entirely aware of, milady. To tell the truth, I had only been in the prison for a few days and was just starting to think about how depressing life was when it all began. The warden of the place began babbling some nonsense and started releasing all the prisoners. Even the truly despicable types. Murderers, politicians, lawyers, you name it. I left the area quickly, of course, and wound up here at the temple. Nice safe place to be. Last I heard, the prisoners were all tearing up the peninsula district, making a royal mess. Hmm. Not the lawyers, though. They were just overcharging. Yeah, why would the warden have released the prisoners? I really can't say. Some of the other fellows were talking like there was some powerful prisoner who was controlling the warden and making him do these things. Sounds too strange to me. More likely he was brain sick with the plague. The entire peninsula district is in uproar, however. I don't think the local constabulatory has it under control either. Come to think of it, I saw more than a few people getting attacked in the street in broad daylight. If you head to that part of town, you might want to take someone along who knows the roads, I. <laughs> of course, he's talking about himself. She hopes to never have to set foot in the prison district. But I think she wants to hear how much his services are for hire. My little pinky toes are quivering with curiosity. Or is that my danger sense? That will go a long way towards explaining my recklessness. Oh well, what kind of mission are you on? Of course, she's not going to divulge anything. Ah, which makes you some kind of secret agent for the lovely elven lass. Must be exciting. I'd be glad to help out for the right price. This is what she wants to hear. So let's negotiate a bit. I can place my superior skills of theft, lockpicking, and swordplay at your disposal for any task you choose, provided you can provide me with a nice payment now. <laughs> waiting to hear this price. I rather doubt you find anyone else of my skill available, milady. Seem like a fine sort of woman, however, so let me say, um, 150 gold pieces. Alright. It's a little too rich for her right now. Especially somebody of questionable worth. <laughs> yeah. Possibly later. You're expecting me to work for free. What do I look like? An elf? <laughs> Come back when you find a few coins. Tell me Undergals has better things to do. I'm sure someone will hire me any day now. Grin. Who nicknames themselves after a facial contortion? Perhaps Lily should assume the alias Wink, and the two of them could rob Lord Nasher of his very own mustache. A crime worthy of a wink and a grin. Lily is finally ready to see the city of Neverwinter.